tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Gordon Ramsay is in Oakhurst, New Jersey to help overwhelmed owner Mike slow the sh down. He lost his way when his business partner and father died three years ago. We didn't really know what to do anymore. Now alone at the helm, Mike has allowed the restaurant to literally fall apart. Ew. The kitchen is a mess. Look at this. Oh, you're kidding me. The food is disgusting. Do you enjoy cooking like that? <laughs> what makes matters worse, a delusional Mike... We've got some fucking big issues here. It's not good. Wow. ...is unable to see the problems. Is this good enough for you? Charred onions, please. Charred onions. And is unwilling to accept any help. I was doing this before you were born. I'm the main cog in this restaurant. I always have been, always will be. <laughs> Sadly, Mike's daughters look on helplessly, desperate to save their father. He's suffering so much. I hate to see him like that. Jeff Ramsey is in one of the most difficult situations yet, as he battles Mike. You're fucking us over big time, and right now I've had enough. And his demons. Mike does drink quite a bit. That's tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Why are you doing this to yourself? It's the beginning of the end. What is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not a fan. Shut the place down. Get out of here. That is amazing. I just can't thank you enough. Just 10 minutes away from the Jersey Shore is the small suburban town of Oakhurst, home to the family run Mike and Nellie's. Opened in 1996, the restaurant was the lifelong dream of two men, Nellie Farber and his son Mike. I wanted to name it Nellie Mike's, but he said, no, it's Mike and Nellie's, you're the man, because he's that kind of guy. And everybody loved my father. Everybody would come in to talk to Nellie. He knew everybody's name, made everybody feel special. He was the front of the house. My dad was the back, Nellie's the front. We're a very good team. He brought in the people, and I kept them here. Everything was going great until Nellie passed away. When my grandpa and Nellie died, we didn't really know what to do anymore. It felt weird to be here. Like, it's not really Mike and Nellie's without Nellie. Now it's just kind of Mike and nothing. All right, let me go right and check. When he left this earth, I had to take over doing everything that he did. Ice cream delivery. Plus what I do, and I just become overwhelmed. Slow the shit down. I know, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Since my grandpa died, the restaurant's been neglected. Hi, is there anything that I can help you with? Yeah, can you <laughs> Oh, ew, okay. The restaurant is grimy. The carpet is a mess. It's nasty, crusty, moldy. It's tragic to look around. I think they need to redo this place. People, they don't come here for atmosphere. They come here for food. And the food here, I believe, is great. Your mind is like matching. Like there's something wrong with it, like chemicals. How's everything with your dinner? Anything you want to share with me? It's a little Sorry. bit more cooked. Yeah, it's like sun. Mike's food, it's really not up to standard. Mike, do me a favor. Will you push 22, please? All right, got it. When I first started, Mike would never just dump the food out into the plate. Now it's like, it doesn't matter. But yet, at the same time, he thinks that this food is great. They don't like it. Well, what's the fucking reason? It just says it has no taste. Oh, really? Yeah. I've only been making franchise for 35 years. You believe this shit? The biggest problem at Mike and Nelly's isn't the decor. Honestly, the big problem is Mike. Everybody didn't go out. All right, I got it. I got it. He feels that he comes in, he has to take care of everything. Did I call for a veal capri? I got it. Give it to me, right? This is my job. He doesn't let other people take moral responsibility. It's just becoming too much for him. I want to get my drink. Since Uncle Nelson's passing, Mike does drink quite a bit. I put a beer in the freezer, a couple beers in there, is there hot? There are some nights where he's just completely hammered. Where's the two flounders? I don't know where anything is today. It starts to affect the food, and he starts to miss things on the tickets. I don't even know how many fillets I got. I don't know what I'm doing, man. My dad is my hero, and it's very difficult to know that my hero is struggling and, like, gasping for air, you know? I really wish I was able to ignore the fact that this is my dad's life. I really, really hope that Chef Ramsay can help.
Before Chef Ramsay arrives at Mike and Nelly's, there's a young woman anxious to fill him in on the issues of the restaurant. Mike's oldest daughter, Samantha. Thanks for helping us. Samantha, right? Yeah, hi. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks for picking me up. I'm excited for you to be here. Well, I'm um, excited to be here, first time for me. Okay. Um, how have you been? I'm all right. Yeah? Yeah, I just, we really need help right now. Yeah? Yeah, a lot of problems at the restaurant. What's the one thing that you think is wrong with it? Ever since my grandpa died and my dad, he hasn't been able to move forward. OK. How close were they? They worked together for 18 years. My grandpa, he was in front of the house. He would host, and people would come to Mike and Ellie's only to see him. He was a great guy. He was very funny. And how's that changed over the last couple of years? He's very overwhelmed and stressed. Really? But he likes to do everything by himself. But he just can't delegate? Right. Definitely a control freak. He's the boss. You know, everywhere sure. in his life, he's the boss. So it'll be very interesting when you wow. have stuff to say to him. Wow. I hope Chef Ramsay can get through to my dad. He needs the help, he needs the change. It's crucial for the restaurant to survive and be successful for my family. I mean, that's my whole life. Hello. Hi. How I'm are you? Mike and Ellie's. I'm Lexi. Right. Sister number two. Sister number two. Yes. Right. You are glamorous. Thank you. Amazing, amazing. Um, what's that smell? Is it just me? I don't you go smell outside. it. Go outside, take a big deep breath of fresh air and come I back know. in. I don't know, I smell your cologne, which smells good. No. <laughs> OK, wait. Ready? Let's do it. No. What is that? No, it doesn't smell to you there. No, no I just smell just you. Just there. I just smell you. Really? Did somebody die in here last night? No. It's okay. possible. No. Oh, Jesus. OK, what happened? What kind of question is that? All right, I, follow I, me, I sir. haven't tasted the food yet. All right. I'd love to meet Dad. All right, I'll go get him. What's that smell? Can you smell something? No. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Same here, sir. Come and say hello. And you are? Lewis. Lewis, the manager. You're the manager? Yes. Yeah, good to see you. Same here. Dad? Yes, ma'am. Chef Ramsay would like to meet you. Me? Meet Why you? me? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Why would he want to meet you? Follow me. I am quite nervous about Chef Ramsay's visit and how my dad's self-esteem will take it because he has a hard time taking criticism. This is good my to father, see you. Mike. Mike? I'm Mike. Pleasure. But the fact is, we need the help, and if somebody's willing to give it to us, we need to take it. I really hope that he can help Dad. How long have you been open? 15 years. 15 years. Yeah, when was the last time you changed something in the dining room? Uh, never. Wow. Everything's pretty much as I bought it. Yeah. 15 years ago. And how would you rate your food, 1 to 10? I would rate my food in the upper nines. Wow. Great. I love that. Uh, I can't wait to yeah. taste it. The food is not the problem here. It's either the atmosphere, the ambience, or the service. Here's your regular menu, and here's your specials menu, sir. Does someone pee pee on my menu? <laughs> on this one. <laughs> <laughs> is, that a, is that I don't know. That's not a urine statement. I don't think so. No. I'm pretty sure it's probably coffee. OK, great. Thank you. If you need anything, I'm at the front. Oh, smell. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'll be your server tonight. Uh, good to see you. Did you smell that? Or was it just me? You smell something, right? Yes. Honestly, it's like that we buried like bodies underneath the carpet. Yes, it's most definitely the carpet. It stinks. I, the restaurant is filthy, disgusting. It's full of mold. It's worse over there. <laughs> Seriously? You're in the good part. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, steak and seafood, and we have Italian food. Uh, Ginny, what is it, fine dining restaurant or Italian? What are we? I don't know. Wow. There is no identity. OK. I'll start up with green with shrimp sauce. Okay. And let's go for chicken murphy. And then the special menu, the steak nelly. The steak nelly? Yeah. How would you like that cooked? Mid-rare. Mid-rare? Please, thank you very much. You're very welcome. I want to see where that 9 out of ten is hitting. It's only that there. Yeah, I'm moving. Mike, I have Chef Ramsay's order. Here we go. Chef Ramsay will like the food here. Anything that I make him, he's going to like. Guaranteed. Look at this place. It's awesome. Louis. Chef? What happened to that lampshade over there on the wall? I don't know. Fix it. It's bugging me. How are you? Nice to see you. It's driving me crazy. I'm sorry. Oh, it comes on when it goes up anyway. Sorry. Just watch your head there. That's for the chef. Make it nice. I made it, so it's right on the money. Okay, 
it, Chef. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. Greeny with shrimp sauce. And greeny with shrimp sauce. Oh, dear. Wow, that's gross. Yeah, it's bland. It's just... The I mean, sauce is bland. Yeah, everything's watery and shrimp sauce, like rubber. It's horrible. Nowhere near a nine. All right. Would you like me to remove that from the Yes, table? please, darling. The sad part is this isn't even the worst of it. This is bland, watery. The shrimp tastes like rubber. I don't know what he's talking about. I am a perfectionist. I will never put out food unless it's right. Is this the Murphy? Yeah. Oh, I hope he likes that. Oh. Chicken Murphy. Chicken Murphy. Huh? Wow. I was afraid to serve him the chicken Murphy. It doesn't look very nice, does it? Um, it's embarrassing. It looks like a stew gone bad. That looks horrible. OK. Where's the manager? Lewis. Is that the normal style of presentation of chicken Murphy? Sam, Lexi, girls, um, visually impact. Does that look appetizing to you? Could definitely use an appearance update. A little mush. Mush. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. After Nellie died, the food's been kind of going downhill. It's kind of at the point where it's necessary for someone to say something. That's gross. It's overcooked, just wet, soggy, and just tasteless. I call it a hot mess. I call it a hot joke. I'm done, thanks, darling. Yes, you're very welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. I can't afford to be up all night with the shits. Oh, excuse me. Thank God you didn't have the chicken Murphy. Bloody hell. Oof. Mike, it's just a hot mess, so... Hey, tough son of a bitch. The chef Ramsay is a ball buster, but if you have an impossible math problem, if Einstein was still alive, you'd talk to him. So we have a restaurant problem. We talk to the master. How you doing? Well, it's a good thing. It's, it's for the better. You can tell that Chef Ramsay being so critical of the food, it kind of hurt my dad a little bit, but my dad needs help. and. If this is what it takes, then this is what it takes. What's next? For the finale, it's going to be the steak Nelly. Right. Best of luck. I don't need to give him any more things to hate. I grew up cooking steaks, and I'm a master of the grill. I'm telling you, I'm good at this, man. I'm very good at this. Wow. This is the steak Nelly? Steak Nelly. Is that a steak or charcoal? No, chef. That's a piece of the steak. Wow. I feel like I've got a barbecue in my mouth. Have a taste of that. How does that taste for you? Would you give that a nine? No. No. Like you said, it is charcoal. Char That's charcoal. Mike, what do you say? This tastes like it's charcoal. You didn't like it? No. I tried it. It's not the wrong one. Well, like you said, there's a little bit of uh, charcoal. There ain't no way in hell I overcooked that steak. That's something that I make that everybody loves, and I never have a complaint. Aren't you going to go out there? For what? I don't know. Shouldn't you go out there? You are the owner, so you're supposed to check on things. I hope my dad will be willing to listen to Chef Ramsay and take the criticism and acknowledge that everything isn't perfect. Sit down. Instead of just being mad. Mike, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm embarrassed. We've got some fucking big issues here. I thought the food was dated. I don't know how you control the menu that size. And then some of the things were in Edipal. The food was watery, bland, soggy. I know how to cook. Come on. The whole thing just looked an absolute fucking mess. What, well, in that last steak? Right. I mean, how do you put a dish like that together? Well, the steak itself is a prime steak, so, I mean, uh, my... I was overcooked, so I had no prime. You rated the food 9 out of 10. I wouldn't pass it above 2. That's not good enough to come back for. No one here. I mean, I'm just going to tell you, man to man, it's not true. Either you're in denial or you don't care. Chef Ramsey said my food was outdated, and, you know, I respect him, but I believe he's wrong in this situation. I know what my customers like, and I know what I like. That's what I like. Fuck that. Nah, I don't want to give a shit. 
Coming up. Wow. Look at this food. Just when Chef Ramsay thought it couldn't get any worse. You are kidding me. It does. There's char and there's charcoal. I say nothing wrong with that. Mike is in denial about everything. No, I yeah. get it at all. And later. Oh, you're kidding me. A series of disgusting discoveries. God, I was not expected to see this. Make Chef Ramsay wonder if Mike and Nelly's. Is this good enough for you? Is too far gone to be saved. What am I supposed to do now? After a lunch that left a lot to be desired, Chef Ramsay is back at Mike and Nelly's for dinner. Hi there, can I help you? And he isn't alone. Hello. Word of his arrival is spread, and the restaurant is booked solid for the evening. Free rush beer. What would you like I'm tonight? Sure. I'm going to have the shrimp. I'll have a chicken scorpiello. OK. Portobello mushroom with jumbo lump. Sun-dried artichoke, Alfredo, shrimp farm. Just tell me quickly how it works, line-wise. Here's what happens, Chef. They do all the cooking, and then they'll put the food out. I don't trust my staff to get the job done like I can do it. As long as I'm making it, I know it's 100%. Yeah, I got snapper, pork, and pepper. I got penny vodka. I got chicken farm. All right. Despite the fact that most of the cooking is being done by one person. Shrimp farm, eggplant farm. Give me 14. All right. Mike manages to push out food rapidly. Shrimp farm? Not at all, baby. Shrimp friend. Pops the rev. I right, take this and go. But his quick cooking. Wow. Look at this food. Unfortunately, comes at a cost. Not good. Not yeah. good at all. Something wrong with your bag? Hi. Bread's falling off. Okay. Let me know. Hey guys, the fried calamari, just let you know, it was mushy, it wasn't good, they didn't enjoy it. Just give you a heads up on that. That is sloppy. I say there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. It's embarrassing. There's a man in there that is killing himself, and he's going down in flames. There's no stand-up set. Everything's just so chaotic. Pans have been thrown, steaks are on fire, and he's sort of totally oblivious to the kind of crap that's leaving his kitchen. It's actually quite sad. What's wrong with that? She said it's overcooked. All right. This eggplant rollatini. She says it's the worst eggplant she ever had. It's not even rolled. <laughs> Mike, let's say it was burnt. Oh, it's hard to bring food back to Mike because Mike thinks the food is excellent. I know he's been cooking for 30 years, but the food is really not up to par. Onions are a little charcoal. Are they a little too well done for you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me take them away and bring some fresh ones for you. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Since Nellie's passed, the kitchen is a disaster. What's wrong now? Too well, too burnt. The food is not what it used to be. It's extremely frustrating. Mike, can I get more charred onions, but not too burnt, please? Charred onions, please. Charred onions. Mike, there's char and there's charcoal. You're absolutely correct. That's charcoal. I need a charred onion right now. On the outside, Mike is really not showing any kind of emotions, but if you look into his eyes, you see this heartbreak, this beating that he's taking internally. It's depressing. How's everything going back there? Yeah. Disaster. Disaster. Does your dad work like that every night? Yeah. But he's destroying himself. I mean, he's just absolutely nailing himself. He doesn't delegate as well as he should. Like, he's reading the ticket, then he's getting it ready, and then he's cooking it, and then he's reading another order, and it's hard to watch, yeah. How are you supposed to run an entire restaurant, cook everybody's meal by yourself? Like, you can't do that. Hot stuff coming through. He doesn't really trust anybody else in the kitchen to help him, and it's a problem. Mike. Yes? I need to worry about that uh, refire on penny vodka. Hold on a minute, girlfriend. I'm going as fast as I can, baby. You all right? I want this night to be over. Here's a penny vodka. Take it, go. All the tickets are out. There's nothing left. All right, guys. Spirits for everybody. Go grab them, man. One for me, too, right? I'm lost of words. Watching both of you behind the line in that kind of commotion there, it's like soldiers on the front line. In your mind, you've got it now that if you get through this battle, tonight's a success. You just want to get that food out. Do you enjoy cooking like that? I don't know if I enjoy it. It's just like what I do. But I mean, I bust my ass. I cook until we're done cooking. Working hard is one thing. Working fast and throwing food out with no care is another. No one's monitoring standards, and no one seems to care. 
You are running yourself into the ground. Dan, can I have a word with... Yeah? Yes, sir. Will you shut the door, please? Certainly. Listen, seriously, have you been drinking? I'm having a vodka cranberry juice. I saw you drinking some beer. Uh, two beers, sir. Two sorry. beers. Two beers. That is not the way forward. You've got to get your head in the game, because the kind of mistakes that you made tonight represents a chef that doesn't seem to give a shit. I do give a shit. I do. I Listen, I drink too much, you know. But why I'm, are you doing this to yourself? I, I don't know. I just don't know. I'm like, I'm lost. I'm lost in space. Why? I don't know. Life's just getting tougher for me, man. You know? I mean, this business is failing. I owe everybody money. I got two daughters going to college. And I'm just trying to, like, make it. You know, and it's not working anymore, you know? I don't this know where to move from here. It's hard for me, you know. This is my passion. I only know how to cook. That's all I've ever done, you know, since I was 19 years old. The passion. When did that go? I don't know. After Dad passed away? Yeah. You know, since my father died, I'm starting to give up. I am. I, I can admit it to you. I'm like, I feel defeated. You Is know? that why you're drinking more? Yeah, probably. You can't go down this line, Mike. You cannot go down this line. It's the beginning of the end. I'm telling you. Well, I don't know what to do next. I really don't. I'm confused. But you've got to get out of denial. And there's got to be a fire in your belly that you've got to rekindle. That's all. Yeah. OK? I'll try my best. OK. See you in the morning. Right. Good night. Good night. This restaurant is definitely taking a toll on me. Everything falls on my lap, and it's wearing me out. It's a tough life. After the death of his father, Mike has been in a downward spiral, and so has his restaurant. He has clearly lost his way. And Chef Ramsay knows that in order for this restaurant to have any chance of surviving... How are you? Morning. I'm good. How are you? He has to put Mike back on course. It's quite nice getting out of the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. It almost feels like it's um, like a ticking time bomb in there. And I'm concerned, I think, really, about Dad. And I had a chat with him last night, and he was, for the first time, been open and honest. He admitted he'd lost control, and sadly, that he was on the verge of giving up. And we can't give up. And then I noticed something upsetting last night, is the amount of drink. I feel like he's trying to drown his sorrows. Yeah. Definitely. I he... think he's very lost right now. Everything fell on his shoulders after, after Nelly passed away, and there's just so much mm -hmm. more responsibility, and mm -hmm. that's a lot to handle. Yeah. I don't think he got over losing his father. I don't think he's got over that hurdle. I don't think so, no. No, I mean, we were he was back at work, you know, and there was no time off. It was, mm -hmm. he was just there. I think he's hurting. I think deep down inside, I, I don't see a happy... No, you can tell that he's hurting. Mm -hmm. Like, always. <laughs> That's awful. I mean, he's got two kids in college, and, like, what does he have to show for it? Like, he's working so much harder than he should be. Mm -hmm. And, like, he's suffering so much, and I hate to see him like that. Your dad is driving himself into the ground. Yeah. And I don't know how much longer, you know, he can continue to do it. <laughs> you know, it's about time we actually turned around and said, hey, Dad, I want you back. I don't want you to listen. I don't want you to slow down. He's your dad. You're his last hope. And last night, that was a cry for help. Do you think you can help him? Yeah. Of course I'm here to help. But I can't help unless he's prepared to change himself. Hello, chef. Morning, Mike. How are you? A uh, tough night last night, right? Yeah. Quite. I came to see the girls because I think the bottom line is, Mike, you mean a lot to this family, and there's no doubt in how hard you're working. But you're not a machine. <clears throat> you're not 25, Mike. You know, you're 55. And the girls have got something to say, and I want you to listen. OK. And I'll see you back at the uh, restaurant. OK. OK, thank you. Thank you, girls. Bye. So, uh, what do you want to tell me? Like, 
really difficult seeing you like struggling this much and working so hard. Right. You have to let go a little bit and not work as hard as you are. I understand. I understand. I don't know how to let go. I don't trust anybody else. But I think that in order for you to be able to function like this, you need to let some other people take on some responsibilities. I would love to take take off and let them. I know cook you. For I me. know, but you don't, you don't trust, trust them enough to do it. You know, you have your guard up all the time. I do. You, you don't like trust anyone. So what do we need? A nicer mic? Is that what you're saying? No, we need no, a more just... open mic. Okay. <laughs> so I'm willing to give a shot at change here. And you're gonna open up though and like let people actually just talk to you? It's not gonna be an overnight thing, but I'm willing to listen. I've been wanting to tell my dad these things for a long time already. And I really hope that he was listening because the problem with the restaurant isn't that we need a decoration change. The fact is that my dad needs the change. After spending the morning at Mike's home, Chef Ramsay is anxious to get Mike back in the kitchen. Show me the fridges. And reignite his passion with food. Well, here's the meat. Steaks go right up on the grill. Jesus, those trays not clean last night? No, I didn't clean them last night. No? I got out of here. They're Shit. a little messy. I don't know, that's chicken farm. That's cooked. Yeah, that's cooked. That's with raw. Uh-huh. We don't get these fridges changed at night? Sunday nights, we do a deep cleaning. So, it's Monday. Yesterday was Sunday night. Yeah. Are they all kept like this? Mike, you gotta cover this stuff. Seriously? What else have you got going on here? Look at this. I'm getting nervous now. 30 years in the business, come on. I'm thinking, holy shit. What else is he gonna find in here that is gonna embarrass me? Oh, you're kidding me. What is that? Who's responsible for this? Jeff Ramsey was looking forward to working with the chefs on fixing the food. Show me the fridges. That is until he made a series of shocking discoveries. Oh, you're kidding me. What is that? Who's responsible for this? Mike, come on. Seriously? Why is it in here? Where's the walk-in right over here? You are kidding me. What is that? That's the lobster best. Shit! Eggplant. What's that? That there? is the calamari from last night. It was prepped yesterday. Why is it bubbled? Jesus Christ. Why is it in here? You're right, Chef. Get it out. That's contaminated. We can't leave fridges like this. I do know those things need to be changed. I tried to talk to Mike, but he won't listen to me. My food got served in that fridge last night. Unbelievable. What's in here? That. Those are meatballs. When were they made? They were made probably last week. Last week. How do you know it's a week old? No dates. Does that make any sense? Come on, this is basic. It's just become sloppy here, and I need to start making things right. The fridge has been ignored at the end of the evening, and then food's left in the oven. Oh, come on. You're absolutely right. It's a disgrace. And discovering that, what am I supposed to do now? Where do we start? Tell me. What time are the team in? 2.30. Get them in earlier. I want that whole fucking place clean. You're better than this. Fuck me. Yo, get a ride in as quickly as possible. Chef Ramsay wants everybody here now. I believe it's time to turn this place upside down. Some things are falling through the cracks, but cracks can be filled. Everything can be fixed. Every night from now on. Right. No more fucking around. All right. Can't do what I'm doing. I'm going to have to change if I want to change my restaurant. Goodbye, beer. I'm ready. This is where we're going to start to fix this place. With a thorough cleaning by the staff and what appears to be a change in attitude by Mike. Uh, first of all, the place is looking cleaner. Chef Ramsay can now turn his attention to the area that needs the most help, the kitchen. So I'm going to do two steaks, a ribeye on the bone and a filet. I've been cooking steaks for 32 years. I know how I do it, which is the right way. But maybe he can teach me something in a nice way. Not in a I'm gonna kill you kind of way. <laughs> okay, onto the grill. I wanna render that fat down. Cooking with Chef Ramsay is a dream come true. Uh, get a nice seat. Oh, on there, please, Daniel. With that, I'm gonna do a chive mash. Just great to see how his hands move like a ballet with his fingers. I was in awe. 
That's a real mashed potato. No horseradish there? A, a touch of horseradish, well spotted. I felt super inspired by Chef Ramsay. I don't know how to put it into words right now. Asparagus, some fries for the filet, a touch of creme fraiche. Perfect. I'm used to cooking like one certain way, and this is a little different. When you spend a fortune on the ingredients, I want the customers to taste them. I want it to ooze the flavor of a ribeye. Simply done. Let's have a little uh, taste, yeah? I'm feeling very, very well. I can already feel the fire burning in my gut, which is something that has not happened in a while. Uh, waiting stuff, get some knife and forks, dig in. Everybody's good. Oh my gosh, it just melts in your mouth. I love the asparagus, I'm coming over. I'm so excited to see it, my dad's so happy. It seems like he really does want to change things and make things better, and I know he can really do it. Can I order this for dinner? <laughs> this is so good. Unbelievable. Coming up. It's one of the most emotional makeovers in Kitchen Nightmares history. So but later, will the pressure of relaunch be too much for Mike? You're fucking us over big time. I have no idea what you're talking about. Right now, I've had enough. Now that Mike has finally seen the light with how his steaks can be improved... No more food to go out that we got some pride with. Perfect. Chef Ramsay is now focused on the makeover of Mike and Nelly. And he begins with something that has been driving him crazy since the day he walked into the restaurant. I need some help. OK. I've come across the most wretched carpet I've ever seen, and it is deplorable. So I need something durable, something strong, something that can take a lot of footfall. OK. Uh, that's nice. I like that one as well with the blue. Can we get this done tonight? Is that possible? Absolutely. With one major change in motion, Chef Ramsay's team is hard at work, trying to accomplish one of the most difficult makeovers they have ever faced. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Chef. How are we feeling? Excited. Hi, guys. Nervous. Mike, I've never seen you look so nervous. I'm speechless. <laughs> You're speechless. OK, today I am proud to unveil the new Mike and Ellis. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> OK. One, two, three. There we are. Oh my god. Mike and Nelly's Steakhouse. Oh my god, it's so nice. Look at that. Wasn't that Mike and Nelly's steak and seafood? Well, what this community is lacking is a great steakhouse, yes? Steakhouse has been my dream my whole life long. Right now, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion, I don't even know how I'm standing here. Mike, one thing that you're going to see when you walk through that door is a new identity and a new you. I'm a new me. Let's do it. Let's go, guys. <laughs> Everybody ready? Ready. Go straight into the restaurant. Oh, Off you go. Jump in. Oh, my God. 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 It is gorgeous. It chills everywhere. Wow. <laughs> no, <laughs> no way. Oh my God. Holy transformation. Oh. Welcome to the new Mike and Ellis. This is gorgeous. This, this is, is so great. Beautiful. This is awesome. <laughs> we walk in, see the restaurant for the first time. We see modern art, the new chairs, the new carpet. I can't get a smile off my face. It's outstanding. It's awesome. Yes, oh God. This is <laughs> great. Look at this place. Wow. Gone are those hideous arches. We've opened the restaurant up. You have a very elegant, open space. And it's stylish. Gone is the old, worn-out decor. And replaced with a stunning, contemporary, rustic look. New carpet, wow. and that smell has gone. I want to take my shoes off. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's incredible. Oh, my God. Unreal. Big man, you OK? I'm totally amazed. <laughs> yeah? Oh, there you are. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm so amazed. <laughs> <laughs> my dream my whole life is to be a steakhouse. It's an absolute transformation that's beyond my wildest dreams. Janine, how are you feeling? I, we're going to be the talk of the town. Yeah. And we're, gonna, and we're going to do you proud. We will. Trust me, you're going to do yourselves proud. <laughs> if Nelly was here right now, he would be so happy. He really would. And I can feel him here now. <sighs> in addition to the updated look and new identity, oh. come in, please. Chef Ramsay has created an elegant, flavorful possible, modern menu. Wow. Welcome to the new Mike and Nelly's oh menu. God, this menu is our foundation. 
a new start to my Canellis. Simple, delicious, and modern. Fancy this look. It's incredible. Let's start off at the top of the table here. Maryland crab cakes, delicious, simple, served with a Old Bay mayonnaise, yeah? Angus sliders. Yeah, slider. Aged white cheddar, shaved lettuce, and a special sauce. The hallmark of this restaurant is going to be the steaks. I love it. Start off with a filet mignon, eight ounce, beautifully grilled. Finish with that wonderful, delectable butter. New York strip, 12 ounce. Modern and beautiful and stunning. Next to that, we've got a delicious braised short rib. That's served with a red wine sauce and whipped chives potatoes. The side dishes. Look at that mac and cheese. Oh, my God. How can you have a steakhouse with no mac and cheese? It's topped with some crispy breadcrumbs. Delicious. That's unbelievable. Right, guys, can you get some spoons, knife and forks? <laughs> I want you to dig in. Thank you. Yay. Dig in, dig in, dig in. Sam, trust you to go straight for the desserts. They're fantastic. Oh, my God, the filet. We got to get over there. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought my food was good, but the new menu is just unbelievable. Oh, my God. Mm, this is so good. You are the man, Chef Ramsay. You came in here and you turned us completely around. This is definitely the start of something big. I see this restaurant going far. As the doors open on relaunch night. Hello, welcome to the new Mike and Ellie's. Welcome. There's excitement in the air and a buzz in the dining room. The decor is awesome now. As customers are eager to try out the new Mike and Nelly's Steakhouse. Back in the kitchen. Here we go, guys, yes. Chef Ramsay wants the workload divided, with Mike doing less and Dan doing more. Daniel, I'm trying to get him to break away. You are the future, so show it to me and show it to him. Yes, Chef. Good. Mike, focus on the grill. Okay. I want you, Daniel, running this and coordinate the kitchen tonight. I hope Mike will back off a little and let me come in and help him out. I'm very capable of taking over. The most important thing is that everything goes out perfect. I'm hoping that Dan can handle the rush. I've been trying to find a chef for the last 15 years that can do what I do. This is nerve-wracking shit here. Here we go. First ticket. Order in. One strip mid-well, one strip medium. I want to hear an echo. A callback. I got two strips, medium well and medium. Thank you, buddy. So far, Chef Ramsay's plan is working. Mike gets the first steaks on the grill. Wipe the plate down, please. Make it look pretty. Come on. Dan gets the kitchen in sink. Crab cakes up in the window. Beautiful. Let's go. And customers are receiving their appetizers. This is really good. It's like heaven. That is spectacular. And the reviews are glowing. Next entree, short ribs, strip mid-rare. One ribeye mid-rare and a French fry. Where are those fries? Coming right now, baby. 25 seconds. 25 seconds, all right. I'm feeling great. Everybody is working together as a team. We're going to be firing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have four fillets up here. But only one hour into service, Mike is no longer working in tandem with Dan. Order a tomato, a Caesar, crab cake. That's the one I just called for that's going out. And instead of allowing Dan to organize, Mike is now confusing the kitchen. Stop, take a step back, and regroup. Let's go. Next ticket to strip medium, filet medium. All right, let's start putting these steaks up. We just stopped listening to each other. I'm the main cog in this restaurant. I always have been, always will be. Dan, I was doing this before you were born. Mike, you can't slip into these old ways. You're killing me here, man. I don't know what's going to happen. Mike's not listening to what Chef Ramsay is saying. We've all forgotten what the fuck we're doing in here. Everything is falling apart. Everything is going to shit. Mike, just let me do this. Come on, guys. You know what? Slow the shit down. You're going ahead. I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. You're fucking us over big time. And right now, I'm having up. It's only an hour into relaunch at Mike and Nelly's. We're going to be firing a steak. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have four fillets up here. Mike has slipped back into his old ways and is refusing to share the leadership of the kitchen with Dan. You're going ahead. I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. And a successful relaunch is in jeopardy. I need you running this and coordinate the kitchen properly. And I want you to be behind him, yes? Yes, sir. All right, let's pick up one strip medium. Pick it up a ribeye. Shrimp, chicken, and ribeye. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm losing you. You're confirming to me you're not lifting one little bit. I know it's hard, but it's not fucking difficult. It will be if you don't listen. Get them working for you. Uh -huh. I need Daniel now to start firing these orders. Right, I got you. Come on, you can do this. This restaurant is not all about me. I need help to run it, and Dan's the man to do it. Order in, strip. Filet medium, ribeye medium. Excellent, let's go. Next up, two skirt, one rare, one mid-rare. I got it, Daniel. Rare's going on, it'll be two minutes. With Dan regaining control of the tickets. Dan, yeah, tell me again what's going on right now. Filet medium cod. Filet medium and a cod, got it. The kitchen has found a proper rhythm. Medium well on the right, Chef. Mike. Yes, sir. Our steaks look fantastic. I got it, baby. My table loved all their steaks. 
Thank you. I got zero complaints about the food tonight. Everything was amazing. Steaks rested? Yes, they are. Put it out, baby. Dan was really into his job tonight and really took a lot of pressure off of me. Like the way it looks in here? The food will be out in plenty of time and you'll love it. It was very rewarding walking around out there. Good. Nice to see it. I felt my father's spirit here watching over me and everybody, and it felt wonderful. How you doing, Daddy? I can't get this smile off my face. My dad completely turned it around. It's great to see him. So happy. Mike, how was the dining room? I'm good, bro. Everybody looks happy and smiling. Keep it that way. All right, brother. Board is clear. Chef Ramsay showed my staff that they need to support what I do. Everybody did great. I think this is going to be the most successful place around here. Well, let me tell you something. When I first arrived, your head was in the grill, stubborn, wouldn't come out. You've transformed and worked with me. Thank you. In there right now is the spirit of Nelly. I agree. And for me, that is enough to confirm that you can do it. I believe in you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for everything. We appreciate Here's... everything you did and oh, more. Thank you. It's been a pleasure and honor Likewise. working with you. Likewise. It's good to see you, buddy. Yeah. Keep it going. Yes. Well done. Chef Ramsay inspired me. I was ready to close this place up. But we got through it. We persevered. And now I'm going to rock this place. I'm going to rock this town. Come here. I... Yeah. My father, Nelson, would be crying right now, overwhelmed by joy. I know he's watching. <laughs> Patty, thank you. I hope you're proud of me. Good job. Thank you, sir. Yeah, look after him, will you? Will do. Thank you for everything. Thanks okay. so much again. Get that spirit in there. Well done. When I first arrived at Mike and Ellie's, this had to be the most depressing restaurant in America, from the food to the decor, even to the owner. But tonight, with the help of a guardian angel named Nelly, a miracle happened, because this restaurant has become the hottest steakhouse in the whole of New Jersey. I just hope it will continue along those lines. That carpet, I've never smelled anything so disgusting in all my fucking life. I'm sure there's bodies under there. In the weeks that followed, business in Mike and Nelly's boomed. It's amazing. Clearly, the new menu is a big hit in this New Jersey town. I will be back for this one. Look at this menu, my God. This is a classic steakhouse menu. My customers love it. Outstanding. This is the whole turnaround I've been waiting for. Order in. Dan has been outstanding in his new role in the kitchen. 15 seconds, 15 seconds. Do we have those strips mid well? Coming right now, baby. And Mike? is embracing the change. Wow. I got up, I got up. Wait to see the menu. Allowing him to spend more time with his diners. It was excellent. Thank you. And now he's following in the footsteps of his father. I love you, brother. I love you too. And there is nobody happier than his two daughters, Samantha and Lexi. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon visits Southern California's Orange County to help an embattled Italian restaurant called Luigi's. Now why the fuck you gonna answer back? With two brothers who can't stand to be around each other. Get the fuck out of here! And a wife no one can stand to be around. No! I just said that! The fighting at Luigi's is constant. Okay, sucks! Go! And even the customers aren't spared. Fuck you! It's the most dysfunctional family restaurant you lie. Chef Ramsay has ever encountered. Say that to can he save this family from ruining the restaurant? I feel so bad. Or is the situation impossible to fix? We are losing the business. Because of him! Because of him! You won't believe what happens on the most intense kitchen nightmares ever. <laughs> what is that? Disgusting crap. You're done. I'm done. I'm not done. Nice. Nice. Oh. Shut the place down. Get out of here. Thank you. I just can't thank you enough. Anaheim, California, the most populated city in Southern California's famed Orange County, and home to a family-run restaurant named Luigi's D'Italia. It was opened in 1981 by a promising young chef with a dream, Luigi Cadizone. My dream was to always own a restaurant and my dream did come true. When my father took a loan on his house and we uh, opened a small restaurant. And with the aid of his father, Dominic, Luigi was able to make the restaurant successful for many years. Luigi's is definitely an Anaheim staple. It was our favorite place to go. Whenever I used to come here as a kid, it was just a really, really great atmosphere. 
In 1999, Dominic retired to Italy and brought in his other son, Tony, to help Luigi run the restaurant. Tony and Luigi have totally different ways of running the restaurant. There's like two different sets of standards. Tony, we got a half a calamari prime mozzarella ready. Tony is a little bit lazy, taking shortcuts. Tony! Whenever Luigi's here, Luigi wants to be more hands-on. There's more yelling and screaming. You're interfering with my cooking! Get the fuck out of here! I don't agree with the way he runs it and the way he does it. We start pointing fingers at each other, and we fight. There's a thing called professionalism, man, and that's not professional. You can't lose it like that. We can work hard. Tony sitting in his ass all the time. It does shit. I get pissed off a lot of times because Tony got to take a more serious the job. You kill him. I got to pissed the yell and say, you know what? It's not enough fair. You brother to carry you. Without you brother, you be this way. You be homeless. Fuck you! You do this to me! I feel like I'm being pushed to the limit. Luigi's yelling, Grace is yelling. I'm trying to keep my sanity here. There's too much yelling going on. I, I, I got a headache. There is a lot of drama that goes on here. That's a ball of shit! Everything no good! Everything no good! The arguments and the stress of the restaurant, it does spill over to the dining room a lot. Answer this question! Answer! Diners don't want to go to, to this restaurant or any restaurant to get yelled at. What did you come in for for? Complain or what? Luigi, Tony, Grace, they just can't seem to work together. You can't go yelling at people like that. It's wrong. Oh, yeah. baloney. They, they complain about everything on the dish. They're neighbors. They come over here. You guys are treating them like crap. They don't know nothing about food. It's tearing the family apart. The way the restaurant is going, it's going to go broke in a month. We're in debt total a million and a half dollars. I don't know if we're going to make it. We're going to see what we're going to do. It's too much stress. If I had to close the doors, I would feel like I failed my father and everything that we worked for together. I would lose everything that I've worked for all my life. I don't know if tomorrow I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to pay my bills. Well gone viral today, and a restaurant's reputation can live or die in seconds on the internet. So I'm here in Anaheim visiting Luigi's restaurant. I'm going to check out their website. Uh, wow, uh, this one looks good. Um, a young, very talented, 22-year-old chef. Oh, look at that. Clearly a youthful maestro. Well, that's encouraging. I can't wait to see what's on the inside. Um, great start. 22. Wow. Hi. Morning. Hey, how are you? Hi, welcome to Luigi's. Good Joe. to see you. Joe, good to see you, buddy. Gordon. Hi, nice meeting you. And your position is? I'm a waiter. Excellent. And you've got a bit of a uh, hot chef in there. Yes, definitely. Uh, could you go and get him, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Wow, look at this place. Luigi's d'Italia. Mmm. Oh, hello, Chef Ramsey. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Gordon, good to see you. Um, hold on a minute. You're not 22. I'm 51. You're 51? I'm reading the latest report on your website, a youthful maestro, 22 years of age in the kitchen. Do you have a son in there? No, it must be a mistake. Yeah, this was written in 1981. 1981? Oh, I have recent reviews, too. What, like 1984? No, 1991. Uh, 1991? Anyway, yeah. if the food was that good back in 1981, how is it today? I think it's better now. Well, that's great news. Yeah. I have a following for 30 years, and what I do, I am the best there is. But there's some things that can be changed. Youthful 22-year-old. I don't like the website. Uh, who else is running the restaurant? My brother, uh, Antonio. Wow, Tony. that's encouraging. Very encouraging, in terms of a proper family-run restaurant. I have my wife, Tony, wow. and uh, okay, great. My, my children. Let's have a little catch-up with the family, shall we? OK. Yeah, are they all here? Yeah, they're all here. Love they're to meet them. Bring them out. Someplace. This is my lovely wife, Grace. Hi, nice to meet you. My wife's good to see you too. Where are you from? Italy. This is your wife? This yes. Is, wow, you did well. And this is? Dominica, the daughter. daughter. OK, wonderful. And this is? My I'm Linda. My brother's wife. That's Watch my out. husband, Antonio. Antonio. How are you? No, very good, Dan. Uh, pleasure Tony, to meet Tony, you. what would you like to be called? I go by Tony. Tony, OK, great. Uh, let's sit down and let's have a catch-up, shall we? 
I'm glad that Chef Ramsay is here to help us because uh, this is a family restaurant and we shouldn't be a split family restaurant. First of all, I'm here to help. And I can't help unless I know what's with wrong. What's wrong with the restaurant? We had a, a phenomenal leader, and the leader was my father. He was in the front. Him and I were always on the same page. And where's your father now? Where is he? He's in Italy, retired. So no one's actually ever stepped into your father's shoes? Well, I have, but I think what has happened is no one has any uh, idea what is needed in this restaurant. We're in a position to lose everything. So who runs it now? I'm the, I'm the guy in charge right now. Well, no, You're... On, on the way we run it is on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, I run the place. And then on uh, Thursday nights through Sunday nights, uh, they run the place. Wow, it's crazy. How does a family restaurant not run as a family? They don't get along. Because you don't belong in this restaurant. It's a trauma. Yeah. When you have laziness, it's an infection. What happens is when Tony is here and Linda is here, they have no understanding that number one is the customer. No sitting around. No looking at the TV. Watching TV when customers come? Is that true? I don't, I don't think it's true. Tony, he don't care about the customer. He was sitting and played the computer. I care about this restaurant. No, I, I don't think so. He had the computer here. He talked with the computer. Come on. Complaints are that people feel neglected. Yeah, but there's also complaints like, I don't want to come there when she's there. Customers don't want to come when you're working. What's all that about? I don't know. It's I mean, a... I'm just asking her. Listen, I'm... I... She's got people that she kisses ass to, and they love her. She's got other people that she gets bl blunt in her face and hate her. Is it right to just basically go up to a customer and just say, fuck know. you, get the fuck out of here? No! I don't say that! I don't say fuck you! Don't tell me this about shit, OK? That's what you said. No, I didn't say fuck you. This is what happened. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did right. What did you do wrong? I'm just trying to figure out what happened. I mean, I, I wasn't here. Did she say fuck you? Did she not say fuck you? I thought right. she did. Oh, I didn't hear fuck you, no. Oh, yeah, she did. What, what, what did you hear? She didn't say that. She said that to you. You no, forget. No, she got what into... What did you let her forget for? You got to be honest. I'm being do honest. Do I to help you or not? I'm trying to get him to well, help. Well, then say the way it is. I am. No, you're not. You're lying. I'm not lying. You guys yeah, are lying. Said, I think she fucked you. You think so she did. Okay, I she did say fuck well, you. Well, then you fucking wrong. That's all. We are losing the business. You understand? Because of him. No, see, that's why we don't get along. Within minutes of meeting the family, Chef Ramsay got a quick sample of one of the restaurant's biggest problems. We are losing because the business. Because of him! Because of him! No, see, this is why we don't get along. Follow me. Thank you. You're welcome. Now he's hoping that the food of Luigi's is as good as Luigi says it is. Uh, wow. I'm going to have a good look at the menu. The menu's huge, right? The menu is huge. The last I counted, there was 126 things on there. <sighs> OK, great. Right, let's start off with, oh, fried ravioli. Love them. OK. Do you know what? What about some linguine escatori? OK. What is the catch of the day? That's uh, mahi mahi. Let's do that. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm. Decor's hideous. It's stuck in a time warp. Takes me back to 1981. Okay, I have a fried ravioli for Chef Ramsay. Fried ravioli for the chef. My food is the best food that's possibly made. But the problem with the restaurant is that we're fighting so much. Fried ravioli? Okay. Fried ravioli. What's inside the ravioli, please? Uh, it's a five cheese stuffed ravioli. And the five cheeses are? Uh, I'm not sure. Well. It's a pre-made ravioli. So they're not homemade? The, those are not homemade. If we don't even make them here, it'd be nice to know what's inside them. I'll find out right now for you. Thank you. How's it going? I need to find out what cheeses are in the ravioli. What cheeses are in the ravioli? Yeah. yeah. What kind of cheese is in the bread of ravioli? Three good box. It's a ricotta cheese, Joe. It's a ricotta cheese. Oh, my God. Ah, horrible. There's something deep, fried, frozen. It doesn't even taste like cheese. Jesus, no. You got whole uh, whey, and you got American grana. And uh, a skim cheese. Yeah. OK, perfect. You got it? Thank you, yes. Yeah, not good. Ramsey, 
I checked on the cheeses for you. Uh, mascarpone. Mascarpone. Ricotta. Ricotta. Uh, also, uh, American Garana. Something called a uh, cheese way and culture blend. Where the fuck is that from in Italy? I don't. I have no idea where that's from. Ooh. And a uh, skimmed cheese. Skimmed cheese in a fried ravioli. What does that mean? It's fat-free cheese dipped in fat. Dipped in fat, yeah. OK, thank you. OK. Skimmed cheese in a fried ravioli. Oh. Pants. Yeah, it looks good. Hey, uh, Joe. Mahi, mahi. Here, I'll yeah. bring it out, tell him. Oh, damn. Oh. Chef, this is the fish special. It's the mahi, mahi. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Mm, it's mush. Bland, greasy, no seasoning. Fish is dreadful. Um, this is a special fish. Yes, that is a special fish. Mm -hmm. It'll taste fine. It tastes like mush. Almost like it's sort of old. The food just isn't the way it used to be. With all the fighting going on, the standards and the quality, everything, it tanked. And that's special. Holy crap. OK. Uh, he said that this one right here, where the fish was just dreadful. It's all right. I'm still hungry anyway. I absolutely think he's wrong about the mahi-mahi. And I thought it was perfectly fine. It was just the way it's supposed to be. That's from the mouth of the chef that knows I taste know, probably know. more, OK? That guy's up here, and I'm down here. What do I know if he cooks it good or not? I don't know. It's his opinion. I don't want you to feel bad, because you know. I don't feel bad. Right. I know. I'm right, waiting fine. for his opinion. What the hell? Chef Ramsey is here to help us. And my brother takes this attitude that it's all bullshit complaints. It's not. You got to listen to those complaints and keep your mouth shut. So everything is atrocious, Chef. Are you tasting the food? Yeah. I you are, yeah? The fish was cooked up properly. It was fresh. Yeah, it's mush. It tastes excellent to me. OK, let me finish this. Thank you. Thank you. I don't need a guy to tell me that my food sucks. If you don't like the food, then get the fuck out of here. The linguine pescatore. Yeah. What the hell is that? What have done to the calamari? What have done to these bits? More tentacles here than there are in SeaWorld. That tastes as bad as it looks. Mussels of the clams were grainy, and calamari had a weird texture to it. Chef, how are you doing with the pescatori? I'm struggling. Struggling? I'm struggling, yeah. I mean, I certainly don't get that taste of Italy, let me tell you that. And the no. sauce is so weak, and it tastes disgusting. Um, are we done? Yes. You can't make everyone happy in life. That's why we need a help. Do this shit. I don't kiss anybody's ass. Take me into the kitchen. I haven't had anyone come into my restaurant and say, Luigi, you don't know what the hell you're doing. Not even Chef Ramsay gets to do that. I'm frustrated. I wish I could say that was an enjoyable lunch. The deep fried ravioli with skinny cheese. Why did you put that shit on the menu? To give it to the Americans. Come on. Come no, on, I'm, I'm not <laughs> laughing now. The fish special, that was overcooked and it was bland. That was a, that was a perfect day. You're not telling me that. Come on. It was like cat food. Linguini, pescatore. That one there is the best dish on the menu. It was my signature dish when I opened the restaurant. I'll stick by my food. I've been sticking for 30 years. I have no problem. Yeah, that's the problem there. You've been doing the exact same food for 30 years. I haven't had a challenge in 30 years. No one's ever challenged me. You're the first one. Listen, you've lost your sparkle. I don't believe this is the same man that was the young maestro that was written about 30 years ago. Come on. There's something missing. I don't know what it is on the back of the fragmented relationship you've got with your brother, but the heart's gone. There's got to be some magic somewhere inside that was once there, but I need it back. He can't tell me that I don't know what the hell I'm doing in my kitchen. I've been doing it for 30 years. After being truly disappointed with Luigi's dishes and his attitude at lunch, okay, Chef good. Ramsay is hoping right. to see something positive during dinner service. Well, welcome to Luigi's. What can I get for you? I'm going to have the ravioli and the cheesy della cotta. I'll be right back. Get your appetizer started, OK? Uh, where's Tony? Give me your number so we play some golf. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing uh, 
maybe Saturday morning, yeah. Tony is more like easygoing. You know, take a serious the business job. There's only seven years between you and Luigi. How come you haven't got gray hair and he's got all the gray hair? I try to relax more. He's a stressful guy. You see what happens. But you don't look like a guy that carries pressure. I try not to. That's a major family problem. You have to change. I'm going to show Chef Ramsay that my kitchen runs like a machine, like a smooth machine. The food is just coming uh, out a thousand mile an hour. Not one chef is tasting anything. The food always gets thrown out like that? The, uh, the kitchen really pumps food, yeah. They're, they're fast. Fast and dangerous. While food may be going up to diners with lightning speed. The sauce is kind of watery. What's wrong with that? They said he doesn't like the sauce on the gnocchi. It. It's also Thank coming you. back just as quickly. Oh, no. What's wrong with that now? They didn't like the flavor of the meatballs. They're solid. Do you know what I mean? They're, uh, and dry as fuck. And Luigi is not taking the returns very well. The lady uh, wanted the, the gnocchis to be more, like, fluffy, like light. Lighter than that. I mean, why don't we put feathers on them? We've been making gnocchis for 30 years. That's the way it is. Oh, my God. It's, it's getting worse. I'm falling asleep. I don't have any garlic. I don't have any mushrooms. Luigi back in the kitchen, it's kind of scary, because we never know if he's going to snap and yell at us for something. Well, why the fuck is that answer back and you don't get the mushrooms? That's all, like I told you. OK, put them over there. That's it. That's all you gotta do is put the fucking job over there because they do the work. That's okay. Everything okay. No worry about it. No worry about it. Nothing happened. Wow. Well, Customers pay extra for that? You work before two people and you make it. You can't make it now with three. Just let it go. Matcha. Oh, no. What's wrong with that now? Uh, there's a two chewy. Two chewy. Two chewy. Yeah. Nobody tastes anything before it goes out? I didn't say this one. One complaint screws up my whole kitchen. It slows everything down. That's the way it is. One. Can I have all the complaints at one time? What's wrong with you? What, what, oh, what, what, what I'm complaints? I'm a chef. You know better than me. If you're but, a chef, yeah, I know. what disrupts your kitchen but you most seem to... What disrupts your kitchen most of all? Sure. What does? The arrogance. The complaint. The arrogance. The complaint, but the it's not true. Arrogance of the also, chef. Yes. The and arrogant. Was... You're an arrogant chef just like me. Worse than me. Why are you shouting at me? I'm not shouting at you. You're not shouting That's at me, right, then you're not. a little bit crazy. I'm a little crazy. Because you are shouting. I'm always crazy. Why don't you come here and tell me how it's done, chef? You do it. No, you know better than me. It's just halfway into dinner service. Why don't you come here and tell me how it's done, chef? You do it. No, you know better than me. But after a series of complaints, Luigi has had enough. That's it. No, he's not gone. He's gone. Well, he's walked off the line. He's not gone. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go back and find okay. him. And you got to understand what he's trying to do here, man. He, he's, he, he's not. The guy is what he is, and he's a fucking asshole English bastard, is what he is, all right? Yeah. But he's being honest with us. I'm not being honest with us. It's yeah, he is. No, it's not a bunch yeah, of bullshit, yeah, man. Yeah. This restaurant, is, it's both our restaurants, so I want to patch things up. I want to get along with him. He's my brother. I, I want the best for him. I think you got to go back in there and finish this fucking night off, man. And don't have no... Don't back down from the motherfucker, man. I'm not backing down. I'm just taking but don't, a break. Don't, all right, you're just I'm taking, taking a, break. a break. I'm too hot. All right. Underneath. The best Italian food west of Italy? Yeah. It's still the best food west of Italy. You put your food against mine anytime you want. Really? I have worked with more chefs than you can imagine in the past. The way you performed tonight did not tell me that it's a man that's in control of his kitchen. And when I come out and read that shit, I'm pissed off for you and your customers. It's 2011. Unfortunately, Luigi, no one's fucking told you. That's my opinion of tonight's service. Oh, what the fuck are we supposed to do, man? Jeff, yeah, all I got to say, I need your help. On the, we, we, we should, we should wake up. up. We get up. To... There's something quite remarkable about how hard you work. But I want you working fucking smarter, not harder. When you come down and come back to 2011, you've got me.
world famous Italian family restaurant. Fuck me. After discovering how dysfunctional Luigi's really is. Good morning. Good morning, Chef. How good are you? Are you good? Chef Ramsey yeah, bro, knows the you? brothers you. and their wives need a wake up call. And he knows okay. just how to do that. So, when was the last time you had a meeting? Uh, well, a meeting with all the staff. Never. Five years? Never. Never, never. Never. Yeah. never. No. Wow. Four of you need one voice put across to all of your staff. Come through to the kitchen. Come with me. I want you to watch something very, very interesting. Just stay here. I'll see you in a minute. Thank you. Wow. Ever. Morning. Come in, come in, come in. Good morning. Take a, uh, take a seat, please. OK. I asked you here this morning because I've never seen a restaurant operate the way this one does. And I can't start to fix anything unless I know what the problems are. I'm just going to be honest. When you go back to the, to the kitchen and tell Tony Garcia Lau, yeah. or you know, whoever, the client is complaining about this, you get a big fight. If the people tell you they don't like it, you can't have Luigi. What do you mean they don't like it? What's wrong with it? Sorry, I know it's your food, your recipe, and that must be kind of tough to like take criticism, but you're going to have to like bend your will a little bit to what the customer yeah. wants. Somebody needs to taste the food before it comes out. We should be checking the, the quality of the food in the bag two years ago, three years ago. It's been declining in your mind for yes, the last two years. absolutely. I get stressed out when I come to work. Why? It's just the atmosphere, the complete vibe that we get, the disorganization that we have. There's no structure, there's That's no... Right. It comes from the top. There's a top. We're not organized at all. How fragmented is it? It's just like Grace and Luigi versus my mom and Tony. It's very separate. The conflict with these two families, the clients can feel it. And who wants to go to a place where the atmosphere is not the most pleasant? So the conflict with the family is spilling into the dining room? Yes, sir. Do, do you agree? Absolutely. The yelling and screaming. And who's yelling primarily? Who is it? Easily, I think the biggest yeller is Grace. I never know if I'm going to walk in and she's going to be smiling, or someone else will frown on her face and start yelling at completely She's very unpredictable. Very unpredictable, right. yeah. Can I get out of here? I don't want to hear this. They're, they're saying what they're saying. You have to let other people talk. Who's going to lie She gets, like, really mad and starts telling you things that, first of all, they're embarrassing for our customers, and second of all, they're not professional. That's destroying everyone's confidence. I feel this big. This well, is all about lie. all a lie, 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 oh, lie. There's a lot of things that are not said. I know you get offended, but that's OK. It wasn't that true. Linda, well, look what she said. Has anyone sat down and spoke to her? I'm just afraid to say anything to her, because I don't know if she's going to yell at me. Could she not take criticism? No. She can't take criticism? No, she can't. Nothing. No, no criticism whatsoever. Come this on. Is, this is what they have to say. I don't want to hear anymore. And if she does change her mind, She'll say that she didn't change it, that she's always thought that. It's crazy. OK. Uh, just stay here for a second. One moment, right. please. I don't care anymore. I don't, know. I don't care about the restaurant. What? I feel like everybody gets to me. They're talking nice in front of you. They're stepping on your back. We're going to work here. I want to just quit. I don't, I don't think I want to be here anymore. I feel so bad. What's the matter? Nothing. Talk to me. No, I can't talk. I just want to quit. That's it. I want to leave. I don't want to be no, all in this no, restaurant. No, no, no. No, I get no. people talking bad about me. No. I can take care of them. I don't care about this the restaurant. Calm. I work here. Grace. It's, I Grace. Yell Grace. Me. Grace. No, Grace. I, just, no, no, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. Grace. 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 Listen to me. Listen to me. Chef Ramsay has arranged a way for the owners to hear how the staff feels about their behavior. I just want to quit. That's it. I want to leave. I don't want to be all of this restaurant. No, no, no. And it's all too much for Grace to handle. I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. Grace, 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 Grace
Grace, 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 listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Grace, I'm sorry. Grace, <laughs> they are here for you. No, they yes, get they, to me. No, they talk about no, me. No, yeah, but that's not no, true. They're liars. No, no, no. Grace, that is the feeling of your team, and they are here for you, and you have to listen to them. We cannot start to fix this restaurant unless we fix each other first. So I'm sorry you feel it's upset, but that's the first time you've seen the way you affect them. But let's just stay calm and let's go and have a meeting together and talk as a family. Okay. Okay? Uh, thank you. Let's go. I think Grace needed to hear all these criticisms. She still is a little bit in denial of the way that she is and how it intimidates other people. I think eventually she will come through, but uh, it's going to be hard for her. You take a seat, just a big deep breath. The owners were listening. The minute I walked in here, I could feel the level of intensity. It was, it, it was depressing. Nobody was being honest with each other. And if we continue to fall along these lines and remain broken, this restaurant's gonna close. And whether you like it or not, you're all tied together. And if we can't work and communicate together as a family, then you shouldn't be in business. Because it's unfair, it's unfair. One thing we are going to do from this day on is work together. Can everyone agree on that? Yes. 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 Yeah. Good. Past is past, OK? See, look, that smile. I was kind of already almost to give up. I know the truth hurts. But I know it can help us. I know it will get better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After an emotional breakthrough as a result of the staff meeting, after you. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Chef Ramsay has an idea on how to get the family working together again. When you think of Italy, you think of spicy sausage. Yes. Yes. When was the last time we made a spicy sausage? When I was a younger girl, yeah. Uh, you used to make sausage with your parents? Uh, oh, yeah. Always. Oh, really? Yeah. I was 10 years old when I started to make a sausage with my parents. Whereabouts in Calabria? Calabria. I feel like I'm, I'm back a young girl. <laughs> OK, so tonight we'll make a brand new, delicious Luigi sausage. And I'll start off slowly grinding. How big do you like the sausage? <laughs> I think, I don't know, like a dog, one. Mm, that makes me hungry. My job was to stuff the sausage. I love it. <laughs> and you know, in Italy, the sausage brings the family together. It's a nice feeling, right? Yeah. yeah. So when was the last time we all spent time in the kitchen together? When was that? Never. Never. Wow. This piece that we are trying to get to right now is long overdue. When my father was here, we were a happy, happy place. It's been too many years and too many frustrations going on. I want you two, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, to make the rest of them. Luigi and I are going to go and cook, OK? All right. Nice. Just to see, like, Tony and, uh, and Grace working together, making sausage, give me a little bit of hope. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Making me feel younger. It's very fun. OK. Sausage is in. For the sauce, I'm going to make it like some nice, sort of rich ragu. Mm. Fresh. Fresh like you, eh, Chef? Oh, yes. Working next to Chef Ramsay is a great, great, great opportunity. The way that he works and the passion that he has, it makes me, uh, me a light of fire and say, why can't I do that? Like I used to think in the old days. I would love to be in the kitchen here when you were 22, you know that? Yeah, it would have been fun. Can you imagine? And I started to realize I still have the passion. Right, are you ready? I'm ready. You're yeah, done. Out of 21st century. Let's have a little taste. Simple, fresh, Italian fare. Jump in. Mm. Oh, man, that's awesome. Me and Grace worked hard on those sausages. I, I feel as though it's just a first little baby step, and I can do better, right? I want to do better. Good job, my gosh, unbelievable. Yeah, very good, I get to... Oh my gosh, too good. Now that Chef Ramsay has seen a glimmer of hope with the family working together... Luigi, we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. 
he has one more surprise in store to make sure Tony and Luigi stay united. I want all of you right now to watch something. Listen. Good night. Our son Luigi Tony is a daddy, your father. It's been five years since I've seen my father. I miss him, I love him. I wish I was close to him. I want both of you to remember how far we work to raise you both and to bring you in this business. Don't forget that beautiful time that we have together. Hard work, but we got a good, good time. Please, who is your Tony? Love each other. They work together like me. And God bless everybody. and remind me of the past, remind me of where we came from and how we started and why we started this kind of business, you know, why we were in it. It puts it back in perspective. What do we gotta dig deep and we we'll make this place to do what it needs to be able to do. Whatever it takes. Start tomorrow. Tomorrow you'll see a new Luigi. I guarantee it. After arranging for an emotional message from Luigi and Tony's father, Chef Ramsay and his team worked through the night to bring a little piece of Italy to Luigi's. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today, we start off with a new attitude, a new restaurant, and a new beginning. Are you ready to see the new Luigi's? Ready. Yes. yes. <sighs> On the count of three. One, two, Three. Oh, my oh, God. God. Oh, oh, wow. My God. Welcome to the new Luigi's. No, no way. Oh, wow. Oh, my oh, my God. Everything has been themed as if we're on this amazing trip to Italy. It's appealing, it's vibrant, and it's got that rustic Italian charm. Beautiful. Oh. Gone is the clutter. Gone are those horrible booths. Now we have this wonderful, nice, family-style bonquet seating. Look at the tables. Underneath, we've got the Luigi's stamp of approval. Beautiful. Yes. Oh, my God. Even the napkins have got your stamp on there. Grace, what do you think? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. I remember now how it was with my dad and how hard we worked to get this restaurant started. Luigi, you are going quiet. I get nervous when you're quiet. No, I'm very, very happy. Yeah, you're... <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Thank you so much. Listen, listen I hope you're that you are re-energized. You are the best. Come on, you're and the you, best. Oh, oh, I didn't know you covered. I didn't know you gave them out. I know, you're the best. Uh, this is just a dream. I'm dreaming. I'm asleep. It's unbelievable. It's a new Luigi's. I'm going to need to give another hug. <laughs> you happy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Make it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After giving the restaurant a much needed makeover, Chef Ramsay has also given the menu a dramatic makeover as well. Welcome to the new menu. It's fresh, it's seasonal, and it's exciting. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Wow, yum. What have we done? We simplified it and made it manageable and delicious. Okay? Let's start off with the appetizers. A lovely bowl of seasonal minestrone with a fresh pesto pasta dishes down the bottom, yes? Linguine al clam, delicious. And then finally, baked salmon for a light take on supper. When do we can start to eat? Let me finish, please. I'm sorry. Is she always like this? Always. No, no, I'm a kid, I'm a kid. I was joking. One thing you do deserve, Luigi, yeah, is a medal for being married to Grace. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Get some knife and forks, jump in, get tasting. Mangiare, mangiare. Oh, wow. It's really good. Mm. So good. My short rib is also Short ribs are good. It reminds me of something mom used to make. The new menu is amazing. I love it. I think this is a slice of authentic Italy in Anaheim. 
Lasagna is excellent, really good. We have the restaurant that looks like a modern place. We have a new mm. menu. Everybody is smiling, everybody's happy again. I really feel fantastic. Everything is excellent. I'll be proud to serve this food. Welcome to the new Luigi's. It's relaunch night at Luigi's. We are serving the new menu. So would you like to start off with the appetizers? Calamari. Can I try calamari? And for the first time in a long time, there's positive energy in the You're restaurant. Welcome. Luigi cooks. Tony, new expedite. Right, right, right. Right, chef. Let's get those first orders in, please. I don't want Luigi panicking. I'm going to get spaghetti and beef balls. Homemade sausage. I want the calamari. I'll get them. Here we go. So, order in. First one. Ordering one order fried calamari, one linguine pescatora. Chef Ramsay has lit up another fire within me that it's going to burn for a long time. Okay, let's go, let's go, guys. Luigi, lovely. Much better like that. Pescatora. Order up. Calamari? Bruschetta. So good. With Luigi producing stunning dishes in the kitchen, diners are thrilled with Chef Ramsay's new menu. That's delicious. And the kitchen is having no trouble keeping up with the demand. Pescatora, pescatora. Go, oh, they gotta pick up, pick up. Where's Tony? Tony. 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 All right, be right there. Look oh, at this God. fucking food. Go to the city here forever. Let's go. While food is getting to the hot plate in a timely manner, I don't know where any of this food goes. Tony and Luigi have stopped coordinating. And the log jam in the kitchen is not sitting well with diners. Where's Tony? I need my brother to come in and give me some help. I get frustrated and I get mad. I want to kill the guy. Tony, what's going on? Let's go, let's pick up the pace. It's relaunch night, and while the kitchen continues to produce food... Tony, what's going on? Let's pick up the pace. All right, be right there. A lack of communication between the brothers has resulted in food sitting on the pass and not at diners' tables. It's getting cold. Tony, service, please. Let's go. Luigi, you have to keep this together. If you start screaming, I'll kick you out. If I lose my crew again in front of the customers, it's definitely going to cost my business. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. I got to learn to take a deep breath and get it back together. Tony, look at me. Look at, look at me now. We're producing unique food, and it's dying. He's cooking. You can't stand there like a lemon. You've got to help him a little bit. We can't cook like this and let the food die in the window. I need you expediting. Talk to each other. Start pushing the food out. Let's go. I'm going to need a fried calamari on that one. What calamari? calamari? Hey, Domenica, Domenica, take this to right here, table 41. Now it sounds like a kitchen. We got some voices in there. I, I still need one more pescatore. With Tony now concentrating on expediting. What else we got? Baked salmon and a chicken parm. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Luigi is free to focus on the quality and the consistency of the food. All right, bon appetit. Enjoy. Oh, he made a for Thank you, thank you. We have a fettuccine Alfredo. And diners are once again enjoying the new Luigi's. That is really good. It is good. Okay, sure. okay. Thank you, Chef. We're finally leaving the negativity and the fighting behind us. Good things will come with a good attitude. This first step is great. Is that the last song take on? Yes, sir. Okay. Tonight we took a baby step forward in the right direction. Slow start, but the customers were happy. And yes, we were. A little bit like headless chickens, but you showed you had passion. Yes? yes. yes. Passion is back in Luigi's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> two brothers, step forward. Look at you two. Honestly, that's exactly what I want to see. You've made the critical first step, but stay on it. Stay on that path. Having Chef bring us together is something special. The brothers need to be bonded. I think my father would be very proud. Love is back at Luigi's. Stay together. You make him look good, and you make him look good. Thank you very much, Chef Ramsay. You're the prince in white shining armor. You walked into our place, and you gave us hope and courage again. Let's go ahead to the chef. Thank you, Chef. Thank you very much. No screaming. No screaming, OK? Stay on it. Wow, I have never, in all the years of Kitchen Nightmares, seen a more explosive family situation than here at Luigi's. They were so busy, 
fighting each other, the reputation of the restaurant went completely downhill. This week, we moved them forward 30 years. But unless this family stays united, Luigi's has no chance, and I mean no chance, of success. In the weeks that followed, Luigi's received a rave review from the OC Weekly. The revamped dining room was slammed. All sorts of delights passed us by. Yeah, this is fantastic. And the restaurant is regaining the reputation it once held in the community. This smells really good. Here, yeah, you got, you got work in you. Wow, that's Luigi. And unbelievably... Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. The family is working together in harmony. Beautiful sauce is beautiful. Chef Ramsey has brought the family together again, and my father in Italy is going to be proud of us. us. We put all our differences aside, and I think we're going to build a new bright future for all of us.